Welcome back, folks. It's now time to finish off the painting by putting some pine trees in the picture. So we're using a large tree brush again. And what we'll do is we'll use plenty of colour, quite strong, we're using the natural grey mixed with the natural yellow and we can get quite a dark sort of brownie colour. Using the brush, plenty of paint on this. What I'm going to do first of all is round about there, just pop a little bit of a straightish line going up. That could be the centre of the pine tree. And then work from the outside of it. Slightly stipple your brush in your palette. Pop that away for the minute. And just use the brush on a slight angle. Use the tallest hairs of the brush and just slightly flick outwards from the middle piece there. Take it up to a point. Do the same on this side. Very lightly, just stroking it outwards. And hopefully you can see that sort of impression of a pine tree there in the foreground somewhere. And really, you can use your imagination and put as many of these as you want in. Again, start off with the centre, put the centre in first. Flick outwards from the side, one side then the other. Just lightly stroking it outwards as you work through. And you get that nice sort of foreground bit of detail there. Very simple but effective. Back to the small brush again, the size 6. Just using a little bit of dark colour, and I'm just literally going to use this colour. And just put a little bit of texture, dry brush, last time's homework again, just work it through and just lightly catch it down more so in this bottom left corner and just literally scratch it in there a little bit of texture and a lovely finishing touch to this simple painting is just a few little birds where I splattered my sky let's put one over the sun there how's that? lovely, right, it's your turn again folks Right, Harry, so okay. let's paint some nice pine trees in the left-hand corner using the tree and texture brush and using a mixture of the natural yellow with the natural grey. Mm -hmm. It's a nice dark browny colour. Obviously, everything's going to be silhouetted against the sun. Right. So what we'll do is use this brush and almost pick your paint up by holding it flat and stroking your brush forward and back right. in your palette. It'll flatten the hairs together. Yes, I'll give you a point. Look at the top of the brush, it's got a slight bevel to it. Yes. It's quite sharp, I guess you could say, and using the sharpest point and painting the actual trunk of the tree, just from there, a couple of inches, two, three inches tall. One line? Yeah, one line up. There you go, that's fine. And this time, if you come back in your paint, you slightly tap it, slightly tap Dib it a little it. bit. That's going to open your bristles, okay? Yeah. Look at your brush, using the tallest part of the brush, and slightly imagine you're painting the actual mm -hmm. branches out. Oh, that way, like that. One side at a time, yeah. That's it, there you go. Of course, wider at the bottom and smaller at the top. There you go. I think slightly wider at the bottom again, it'd be nice on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and do the other side as well. It's very delicate, isn't it? It looks like a cactus. It's yeah. very delicate. Cactus, yeah, we're in Arizona. A little cy <laughs> cypress tree. It's getting there. It's quite impressive, actually. That well done. I think we'll stick a big one there. A big one. So okay. if you get your back to the flat forward bit. and back first, mm -hmm. put your central line up again and do exactly the same. Okay, okay, a thin line. About here. Yeah, make it taller. Taller than that one, but yeah. starting from lower down. That's it. I've got a dab now. To dab, dab to open up. Dab and very lightly stroke yeah. to get the branches. Come on out. These branches don't want to come out. Here we go. That's it. That's good, that. Yeah, nice. Where do I put the fairy on the top? You know where to stick the fairy. <laughs> That's it. Smash mm -hmm. in. That's good. Finish off just by using a size 4 brush and putting one or two birds in your sky. What shall I use for this, this one? If you use some of the dark, any kind of dark colours in your palette for this, because right. it's going to be dark enough to be silhouetted anyways. It's nice to get them over your sun because it's a misty morning. Over your sun? Yeah, over okay. your sun. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad bird, it's like That's an eagle. <laughs> I don't know what that one's done. Let's try again. That's, That's it. Better. That's all right, yeah. Three birds is fine. Really? Oh, that's a mess. All that's right. it. No, it's fine. That's good. That's it's all right. Yeah, it, it sort of balances things up because yeah. it's bringing this colour over there and it makes people look wider. Well, these are Canadian painting. geese, you see. That's why they look so big and they're really coming. Right. <laughs> They're on the way home for the winter, are they? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well done. Perfect. And while Mandy and Nigel had their trees, I'm just going to recap what we've done. Painting the pine trees with the tree and texture brush in a mixture of natural grey and natural yellow, quite a strong colour for this one. Adding some foreground texture with a size 6 brush. And finally paint a few birds into the sky with natural grey. Right, so 
looking at the masterpieces. This one's Nigel's painting. I think he's done a smashing job of the mountains and the sky very smoothly blended as well. I like the way he's brought in the blue down into the red. It's almost got like a cloud effect working through there. Very impressed with the trees and I think the birds are the best of the three. This one's Mandy's painting and Mandy's done a much more of a sunset version of the painting, very dark, strong colours. Again, nice recession, nice shape to the trees again. And she's got some foot soldiers just walking down the hill as well. This one's Harry's painting. Um, <laughs> vast improvement from the first one, I think. It realised not to put too much water on. Clouds work quite nice. I think maybe next time you do your clouds more horizontal, less jittery, I think. Nice hills. And again, people have done fantastic jobs on these trees. Massive well done, folks, for this week's watercolour painting. Big well done to those three as well for having a go and producing a fantastic job. The homework this week is to have a go at painting pine trees using the techniques that you've learned today. And I really hope that you've enjoyed and feel inspired with this week's episode and get out there and give watercolour painting a go. Next week's watercolour painting is painting a fantastic snow scene with a nice dark sky and a silhouette of a winter tree. So it's a goodbye from me and it's a goodbye from these three. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. For the second lesson to be able to do something like this, I'm really pleased with this one, especially the, the area around the sun itself. Um, it just shows what you can do. Once again, I've really enjoyed my time with Matthew. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with the tree, but I've done a sneaky thing of putting the mount over, so I'm quite happy with it now. Well, I think you'll find that's a vast improvement on the first one, although the birds do look a bit like pterodactyls. We're getting there.